Hello class. This is an experiment. I'm going to try to write some notes while I am briefly videotaping this. And you guys can let me know how the resolution and the sound is. So, I will set this up. We're going to be doing uh, chapter 7 on conic sections. I'll talk to you in a moment. The first topic uh, we're going to do is we're going to review section 2.8 and that is to find the distance between a pair of points. So first to find the distance we have to remember uh, we have our distance formula or you can just remember the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do it using the Pythagorean theorem idea. So I'm going to briefly plot where about where these points are it's just an estimate so negative 2 negative 5 would be about here and 2 3 would be about here so there's 2 3 there's negative 2 negative 5 so now we're going to create a right triangle and it is the hypotenuse that is the distance now the Pythagorean theorem we need to find the length of the leg. So we're going to start with the vertical leg. If I'm looking at the vertical leg, that is a y direction change. So on the y's, I'm starting up at y equals 3 and I'm going down to y equals negative 5. So that would be a length of 8. On the horizontal leg, horizontal is an x change. So I'm starting at x is negative 2, and I'm going to x is equal to 2, so that is a change of 4. And now we know that our distance squared is going to be 4 squared plus 8 squared, because that's what the Pythagorean theorem says. Sorry about the quality of this. It's my first time. So now the distance squared is going to equal 16 plus 64, which is... Uh, wait, don't tell me. 80. And then we'll take the square root of 80. So distance is equal to the square root of 80. And you want to simplify that as much as possible. And it turns out that 80 is 16 times 5. So that will be 4 root 5. So there is a review of the distance formula. Now let's talk about the midpoint. Remember to find the midpoint of a line segment. If we have our two endpoints are given as negative 3 halves, negative 3, and 2, 7 halves, then the midpoint, the idea to remember is that the midpoint is like an average. So we find the average of the x's and the average of the y's, and we will have our midpoint. So I will let you guys do that one on your own. Next, we're going to start talking more about Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is all about conic sections. Our goal in Chapter 7 is to look at the expanded form of the equation of a conic section and be able to recognize what type of conic section it is, what the graph will be. Our second goal is to be able to complete the square and get it in standard form. And the third piece is to then graph that conic section. So there are four conic sections, and when I see you in class, I will bring my uh, handy cone to show you a visual of this. But right now we'll just remember that there is a circle, an ellipse, a hyperbola, and a parabola. And we've already done some parabolas, but now we're going to do uh, parabolas that open sideways also. So we're going to start with the circle. The first conic section we're going to discuss is the circle. So here we have, oops, sorry the standard equation for a circle. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. x and y are our variables and h, k, and r are all special. The first special part is that the center of the circle is located at the point h, k when our equation is in this form and the radius of the circle is equal to r. Now be careful because notice that this is r squared here. So our first job is going to be to graph this circle. 
So, let's see if I can video and graph at the same time. First, we're going to look. That, you're going to have to trust me on this, is x minus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 5 quantity squared. It's a little hard to see here. Uh, but please follow along with your handout. So the center of this circle is going to be at 2, 5. So let me find that. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Next, the radius, here's 16. Remember, that's the radius squared. So the radius is 4. So what I'm actually going to do is start at my center and go right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now those four points are on my circle. And now I just do my best to connect them and make a lovely circle. Done. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the next problem. Uh, the next problem says complete the square, but we really don't need to. What we want to do is write this in standard form. Notice standard form has no coefficients in front of the x and y parts. So this does have coefficients, so the first thing we're going to want to do is divide everything by 12. And when we divide by 12, see if you believe me, you will get x squared plus y squared is equal to 144 divided by 12 is 12. So on this circle, if we were to graph it, the center would be at 0, 0, because there are no h and k here. And the radius would be, careful, the square root of 12. So we're going to have a center at 0, 0, and a radius. Now you have to simplify your square root. I'll let you guys think about that. The square root of 12 would simplify into 2 root 3. Done. This next problem, number 5 on your handout, is very easy. So I'm going to leave that for you guys to do. It says write the standard form of the equation of the circle with the given center and radius. You're given the center and the radius. You write it in standard form. I will check that on your next binder check. So now we're going to move on to number 6. Now number 6, this is the problem we skipped back in chapter 2. On this one, we want to take this, I call this the expanded form of the equation of a circle because everything's all multiplied out. So what we want to do is we want to put it back into standard form and to do that, we are actually going to complete the square twice, once on the x part and once on the y part. So I'm going to pause for a moment and what I do when I do that, I'm going to write this just by reordering my terms here. Okay, what I have done is I have just reordered the terms in the equation we had. I've written the two terms with x next to each other, the two terms with y, and I've moved the constant over to the right hand side. Now we we learned how to complete the square uh, way back in chapter well, 1 or 2, something like that. And we're just going to do the same process. So let's just look at the x piece. Remember, we want to find that magic number. And that magic number we find by looking at the coefficient on x. Well, first we check. There can be no coefficient or a coefficient of 1 only on the squared piece. So we're happy here. Next, we look at the coefficient on x. It's 10. And remember, we take half of that and square it. Half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So we add 25. This is an equation. Whatever you do to one side, you've got to do the same thing to the other. So we add 25. We do the same thing on the y. Coefficient of 1 on the y squared plus 8y. So we look at 8. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So we add 16. Whatever we do on the left of the equation, we have to do on the right. Now let's simplify. Remember, the whole point of adding this net, this magic number here, is now we can factor this. x squared plus 10x plus 25 factors into x plus 5 quantity squared. Same thing with the y's. y squared plus 8y plus 16 will factor into y plus 4 quantity squared. Now let's simplify over here. And I think we get 12. Somebody better double check on that. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be a 12. Now, we're asked to then give the center and radius of this circle. So the center will be at, be careful, negative 5, negative 4. And the radius, again, will be the square root of 12. 
which simplifies to 2 root 3. Okay. Problem number 7, again, is a review problem. We had one of these on a test. So what I would like you to do is to find this in your notes and do this on your own. Again, this will be something else I check on the binder check.